Hey, what's up, Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a little UI system that pops up elements over a 3D model in world space. You're still using a screen space UI though. So here you can see I've got a car and get these little indicators that are buttons that I can click on. They might do something, maybe they'll pop up more info about this specific thing like the handle or the tire. And as I turn around and look, you see that these kind of appear just you know, whenever they're near the center of the screen. So these start to show up. And the position of these is completely dynamic as well. So let's take a real quick look at that. If I go in and adjust my car, maybe I move this over, you'll see that those positions are still matching up. And same with if, you know, if I do some rotation or something, you see that the locations all still kind of line up and everything just works. Um, so let's see how this is done. It's actually a pretty simple process and I'm just gonna run you through it real quick. So I think to do that, what I'd like to do is just kill the scene and go step by step. We'll build this up and be done in just a minute. So here's the scene without any UI elements. And we're going to start just by creating a new canvas. And to do that, I'm actually going to shortcut and go straight into making a button. Go down to the button and delete the text since I'm using an image here. You see the button's just down here on the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to go to the button and change out the sprite first. Now I've downloaded a texture. I just grabbed a random te target texture and painted it white so it would show up and kind of work. And I need to give it the right size. I think I had these around 75 by 75. There we go. You can see the little target indicator there. And I could just, you know, move this thing around. Oops, didn't mean to hit that. I could move this thing around and uh, get it into the right position, you know, like grab it and maybe drag it around until it's over the tire. But here, you know, of course, it's hard coded in a position. As soon as I rotate this car or move it, that's not going to show up. That's not really what we want to do. Instead, what we need is a simple script here. So I'm going to go into the assets folder and I have this world position button script that I just wrote. We're going to pull it up. Um, maybe we'll optimize it a little bit and I'm going to show you how it works. So let's open this thing up. All right, and let's take a look. So you see here we have a serialized field for a target transform. This is where we're gonna assign the wheel or the handle or whatever piece that we want this button to follow. And then we just implement an update method. Now some of these get component calls should be cached in a real thing. I might pull those out, but just note that you shouldn't be calling get component every frame. You just cache it in and away you can do it. In fact, let's do that now. So I've got this, oh, wait. let's stop take a step back and just go over the code and then we'll do it. So here we've got this uh, line 11 where we get the screen point of the um, target position. So this is gonna give me the actual screen coordinates of the wheel or the thing that I'm targeting by passing in this target transform. For this to work, you do need to make sure that you're referencing the right camera. Camera.main still references whatever camera has the main camera tag on it. You can see that here in the project, we've got the main camera and it has that main camera tag. This is usually on by default. I think it might go away eventually, but just you can use camera.main for now and grab this camera. Just double check the tag if it's not working. Uh, the next thing that we do is get the rect transform of this button. So it's just the transform for a 2D object or a UI object is a rect transform. And we set the position to this screen point. And it's important to remember that this screen point is the position on the screen, not where the actual thing is in the world. So this is going to be a 2D coordinate. Uh, the next thing I do is get the viewport point, and I get this with the same call, similar call, world to viewport point instead of screen point. And then I'm getting the distance from the center. So this viewport point is going to be somewhere between 0, 0 and 1, 1. So that'd be on the X and the Y. They'll both range from 0 to 1. And right in the center of the screen is going to be 0.5X and 0.5Y. So I just want to get the distance from the center right here. So I'm getting that position. And then the center, again, is vector 2.1 times 0.5. That gives me the 0.5X and Y. And I'm getting that distance. And then just checking here if the distance from the center is less than 0.3. So if it's in that, uh, what is it, like 60% of the screen, then I'll show it. So show will be true. Otherwise, show is false. And that's how you'll see when, when I showed it earlier, it was kind of appearing and disappearing based on where I was looking. So to do that, we just get the distance from the thing and then show it. And you may not want to do exactly this same distance check. You might want to do just a horizontal distance check, cut out the vertical part or something. But 
I think this kind of gives a quick idea of how to do that. Now let me clean this up real quick just so you can see how we should do this in a, in a slightly more real project. So we're getting this rect transform component and I'm going to cut this and just call it rect transform, lowercase r and lowercase t. And I'm going to just uh, do private rect transform rect transform up here. And then I'm going to add an awake method. So do private void awake. And here I'll do rect transform equals that. And let's see, oh, there we go. Fix up the casing and a semicolon. So now we're getting the rect transform once at awake and we're not calling that get component every frame. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this image. So I'm just gonna go image lowercase i equals get component image. And then if I hit control period, I can actually just generate the variable for it. Copy that and update that right there and we're done. So now we've just increased performance a little bit and simplified things. Well, I think it's simplified. It's a little bit easier to read. We're not adding git component calls in the update method at least. And let's jump back over the project, finish setting it up and wrap this thing up. All right, so we've got our button. Let's add this world position button script to it. And then let's assign a target transform. So I'm gonna go down to this Fire GTO, which by the way was just free on the asset store. Pretty cool little car. I'll link it in the description. Uh, and then go down to the wheels and let me find that front left wheel. I think this is it. Alloy zero one. So I'm gonna select my button and assign that rect transform or the transform, not rect transform, in the target right there. Hit play. And let's just see if it lines up and matches. It looks like it might. Well, I can't look at it, right? So right now the wheel is off the center. So what I'm gonna do is go to my main camera and I have a mouse look script right here. Drop that in and now I should be able to look. And now you see as it gets down to that 0 0.3, you know, the distance right there gets closer to the center, it shows up. And again, I can go above too high or too low. That's where I said you might wanna cut out the Y part. Um, anyway, it's showing up over the tire. Just kinda works, right? So let's uh, add in a couple more. So go in here to button and duplicate it. I don't know two, three times, let's drop in another tire for the second button. I think this one's the front left. And then, um, oh, let's see, let's let's say I wanted to add a point that to something that doesn't have a model point or a mesh point on it. What I can do is just kind of go over to here. Maybe I want to add something to the mirror. Just go to game object, create empty, hit control shift F to move it right to me. And I'll make it a child of the fire GTO and just call it mirror. Yeah, let's back up just a little bit. That's oh, pretty close. Just kind of move it right about there. Assign it just like this. So I've got my button, my last button is selected and I'm gonna drop that in. And now I've got a transform point for my mirror that's assigned and I should get a little indicator right there. Perfect. And remember, these are buttons. I can click on them, assign them to do whatever I want, pop up a UI or anything else. If you're not sure how to do that, I've done a couple button tutorials that show, I think some of, some of the functionality you might wanna add on to this later. So I hope this is uh, helpful. Um, this just came from a question that somebody asked. If you have questions, you know, feel free to shoot me an email, jason at unity3d.college, or hop over to the site. Um, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, get alerts, and all the other fun YouTube stuff. All right, thanks a lot for watching.